Hi everyone and welcome to a new video about control systems topics. We'll continue with our examples from body plot to transfer function. And in this example, we will consider a different transfer function and we will see new aspects of how to determine the transfer function. So let's move on to example number four. So what is given? We have the following body diagram or body plot given and we would like to determine the transfer function. What you here recognize is that there is no DC gain, so there's a different situation, so we will also consider this for the first time in this example. Again, I will zoom in in this uh, body diagram and we will see that in full picture in the next slide. So what you have is now the following. Okay, what you see is the f actually that there is a gain, maybe around 45 dB here, at 10 to the power minus 2 radians per second. Of course, if you reduce this frequency, you go to 10 to the power minus 3, 10 to the power minus 4, 10 to the power minus 5, and in theory to 0 radians per second, this will of course increase, increase, increase. So in it, it will be of course infinite at 0 radians per second. So there is no DC gain. But what we do actually with that in this case? Now what you can see from here is that at approximately, let's say, the zero radians per second, that there is a phase shift of minus 90 degrees. That means, actually, that there is a pole at the origin. How can we confirm this? So I've just looked at the phase and I already concluded, or I estimated there is a pole at the origin. If I look at this graph, the first part, this decreasing line, which is a, has a constant slope, this must, have a con this must have a slope of minus 20 dB per decade. Can I confirm this? Now, if I say that this is 45 dB, it is larger than 40, so it is around that 45 dB, it decreases actually at the midpoint between the 0 and 50, so it is 25 dB. So it is actually started as 45 dB and it comes at 25 dB at 10 to the power minus 1. So what I have is I have increased in the frequency from 10 to the power minus 2 to 10 to the power minus 1, that is, that is just one decade increase because you multiply the frequency by 10 and your gain reduces by 20 dB. So you go from 45 to 25. Now well, let's convert that with another point. So if I move to 10 to power from 10 to the power minus 1 to 10 to the power 0, again, 10 times increasing your frequency, you will drop your gain from 25 to 5 dB. So again, we confirm actually by using several points from our plot at this first part of our uh, gain uh, section that the, there is a pole at the origin which is of first order. So we have a pure uh, pole at the origin at s is equal to zero. So that's actually what we have. Of course, we can now make an asymptotic line for this region because that will be necessary for our further calculations analysis. Why? Because the gain will not stay at the same, uh, will not decrease at the same slope. So this will, of course, go much faster here. So if I now make the slope in the next part, this red line, you can see already if I make the tangent line at this part, this actual gain will decrease much faster. So there is an additional reduction in the gain here. That means there is a pole. Why is there is a pole? We can also convert that from the body for on the phase diagram the phase started at minus 90 degrees it will now also become more negative so if it is more negative there is also a pole which is now uh, at this region around here so we will of course determine that by checking the second region of the gain uh, plot so if i now make a tangent line for this part because if i look at the part continuing to the larger frequencies the slope will again be more negative. It is not really that uh, simple to see, but we will try to make a tangent line here and it will be uh, clear if, I, uh, if, I, if we have a tangent line for that part also. So let's draw the tangent line. And that is now the following. So the green line that will make the tangent line for this part, what you see is there is now an intersection between this red line and this green line at, at approximately 10 to the power 0 times 2, which is at 2 radians per second. So there is a 
corner frequency or break frequency at two radians per second. And this is again a pole. So we have a pole at two radians per second. We have a pole at the origin because there is already a slope at the first part of the graph. So let's move to this part because this part, as you can see, that is much easier to see uh, by making a tangent line here because this slope is less uh, has a less negative value than this slope so this is a much steeper slope so if i now make the final uh, tangent line for this uh, part what you see is the orange line and that will now intersect this green line around here and that is for example approximately if i now make this this is now 10 this is 20, so it's approximately at 15. So we have a pole and another pole at uh, 10, 15 radians per second. So I have now actually determined the necessary uh, uh, elements for determining our transfer function. So we are here again with our body plot and our asymptotic lines. Let's also designate our two poles here. So we have a pole at two radians per second and we had a pole at this part which is around 15 so let me write it down as omega p so that is omega p1 and this will be around here this will be omega p2 okay let me write it down so what we have is an omega p1 is for the break frequency is two radians per second and that is our first pole, so pole, actually the second pole, so pole two actually. And we have now the 15 radians per second. Because there is a pole at the origin and that is the first pole. Okay, what is now the following step? Following step is actually also determine the transfer function. What was the transfer function? Let me uh, write it down in black. So the transfer function again is G, S. And what we usually did in the previous example, we put here a K, D, C, etc. And then uh, develop the terms for the numerator and denominator. But there is no DC gain. So this template doesn't work here. So how do we determine then the transfer function for this part? What you should do, what, you, uh, what, what is uh, possible here to start with, is the first part of this graph. If I look at this frequency, 10 to the power minus 2, the gain is 45 dB. So if I now move, say the gain is 45 dB, is 10 to the power 45 divided by 20 and if you do math here that will be approximately 178 and this is at omega is equal to 10 to power minus 2 radians per second you just pick a one you just pick one point uh, in this uh, in this uh, region and that will uh, uh, give you the value for the uh, transfer function which is need now necessary for our template so if i now use this value and multiply it by this that will give a gain which is actually sort of the integrator gain because this part is sort of the pure integrator so i will now have the following i will now have 178 times 10 to power minus 2 because of that at that frequency divided by the pure pole at s is zero so there is a pure pole at s is zero so again i will write it down there is one pole so pole one pole one is at s is zero okay this is actually this part now how do you now insert the pole two and pole three in this transfer function that's not really difficult. You, what you do is, and what we did also in the previous examples, you put the part as divided by omega p1 plus 1, and then s divided by omega p2 plus 1. 
that stays the same. So additional part here is that we don't have a DC gain and we would like to determine also the sort of the gain expression of this transfer function and that is determined by taking a point from this red section of the graph and you will take the magnitude of that, of course uh, convert that to the scalar value and you will take the corresponding frequency. If you for example take the 10 to the power minus 1 that's also fine you will have to take 25 and of course convert that to the scalar value and you will have approximately the same value for this gain. So what you have now if I just substitute the value for omega p1 and omega p2 this will result in and of course simplify this term in the in the numerators that will be 1.75 divided by s times s divided by 2 plus 1 and then s divided by 15 plus 1. Okay, we will now simplify this as we did also in the previous examples. We will now try to simplify this such that we have a isolated uh, term s plus something. So we would like to get rid of these fractions. So with the 2 and the 15 must uh, must be worked out here. So what we should do as a first step, we can multiply the numerator and the denominator by 2. Then I will get rid of those fractions. I will have a s plus 2 here and this will stay the exact same. And I will do that in the next step. So I will multiply this by 2. I will now make this s plus 2. That's actually the first step. So what you get is 3.56, which is the effect of multiplying by 2 and it will be s divided by s plus 2 times s divided by 15 still and then plus 1. Now if I now move on and also simplify this part because I have to also get rid of this 15 so I will, will multiply by 15 the numerator and denominator so I will have 15 times the 3.56 that is approximately 53.4 and I divided by s times s plus 2 times s plus 50. Now I have now the transfer function for this system. I have a pole at the origin. You can already see this. There is a pole at the origin at s equals 0. This function will be undefined and at s is minus 2. That's actually the negative of what you actually see here and you have a pole at 15 or minus 15 if you of course look at the mathematical value so this is the R transfer function remember there is no DC gain I will I will uh, stress that don't make the mistake by taking this part as the DC gain because there is no constant value for a specific very low frequency so that is not the case in this example Okay, I hope uh, this clarifies the situation for these kinds of uh, uh, plots where you see a slope which is uh, constantly uh, decreasing and there is no um, horizontal um, part in the uh, section and you can try to do it in this form. If you have questions, please let me know in the comment section and I will try to answer them as soon as possible. Thank you very much and see you next time.